how's it going guys? So I'm back. We're gonna continue where we left off with the fin here. Last video in part two, we created this fin uh, using a little bit of Vex. And in this video, we're just gonna place it on the sides of the rocket. And yes, things look a little bit different here. I'm in a different operating system because I'm uh, using my laptop here. I don't have my workstation set back up quite yet. So um, here we are. If you haven't uh, done the fin yet or the fuselage, uh, from parts one and two, go ahead and, and do those. Those should be in the uh, playlist. And make sure at the end of the fin that you have a little null object here that you, you've got it named, something that you'll remember. In this case, I've set this to the fin high out. This one is going to be the uh, rocket high out for my rocket fuselage. And now we just need to place this fin on the sides of this rocket. This should be hopefully a little bit shorter than the actual making of the fin, but no promises. <coughs> All right, so one thing that I'm doing here uh, is I'm separating these pieces out. I like to kind of keep these off on their own just so that I don't end up with this, like, this huge web of stuff with you know all these massive kind of uh, networks all linking together. So I'm gonna just kind of place this guy off to the side over here. We can uh, put it in a box if we want. So we can come up here and create a new network box and just drag just for select these guys and then create a new network box. There we go. And just name the box, we'll call it fin. That way it's documented and it's a little bit easier to know kind of what, you know, what this is, what it's doing. And I can add colors to it and stuff and uh, just make it a little bit simpler and easier to see what's going on. But I, I'm gonna avoid um, making this <clears throat> making this thing too messy. So I'm gonna to try to keep the, the placement and the creation of everything kind of its own separate network. So uh, what I'm gonna do is instead of linking that in directly, I'm gonna use an object merge. So we're gonna drop down an object merge. And what that'll let us do here with my object merge is let us just kind of pick something. So I'm gonna type in fin here. I've already got fin typed in. And then select that null object that I created earlier and then accept. So it's gonna bring that fin in over here. So now this is different from this network over here. It's just kind of, it's referencing or, it, or it's calling it up <coughs> and bringing it over to another part of the, the network. And we can do this actually, you can call things like other objects from other, um, or either, even uh, geometry nodes themselves, you can bring those in. So I'm also gonna add a regular merge. And a regular merge just lets us merge these things together. So I'm gonna take that guy and this null, and we're just gonna join those together. Now this fin is part of the rocket fuselage. So we're done. No, obviously not. It's kind of looking pretty wonky here. So I need to be able to place this thing dynamically on the side of this rocket. And to do that, we're gonna use uh, a copy to points, and we're going to use a circle that we can kind of scale and size dynamically to the size of our fuselage. So I'm gonna make a circle. I'm gonna make a copy to points, and that'll set up our basic network. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that input to the copy to points. The copy to points, if you mouse over its inputs and outputs, that first input is the primitives to copy, and the second input is the points to copy two. So in this case, we're gonna be copying two, that circle. Now the circle doesn't have any points yet because it's still NURB, so we need to go into our circle and change it from a primitive uh, to a polygon. And now we've got a bunch of fins all arranged really incorrectly. So we're getting there. So first things first, we wanna make sure that it's going the right direction and not kind of like around, you know, vertically like this. So we wanna change this to the ZX plane, right? <clears throat> Still not doing exactly what we want though. They're all kind of going in a, a strange direction. And if we look at the circle here and I'm just gonna turn on uh, display normals here, this little, button on the side of the viewport with a little circle with a line coming out of it. That'll tell us what the normals are for this. And it uses the normals to try to decide where our object is gonna go. In this case, our normals are all facing straight down. And when we copy to points, it's basically putting it on the opposite side of that. And now we can see all the normals of our, our points on our fins here. But what we wanna do is just kind of arrange these normals a little bit differently. So I'm gonna use what's called a polyframe. And we're gonna set these up so that the normals actually kind of flow based on the direction of the, the lines on either side of 
the point. So with this polyframe, I'm just gonna uncheck the normal name box and we're gonna set tangent name instead of tangent U, we're gonna call that capital N. So the tangent name is gonna be referencing the normal. So now we've got our fins facing the right direction. If I look at this polyframe, so I'm gonna display that, we can see that those normals now are pointing kind of in like that. And then when we copy the points, there we go, we got our fins everywhere. So let's turn off the normals there. Let's also turn off the points. We don't need to see all those points just now. So we got a bunch of fins, probably probably too many. Some would say too many fins. So how do I control the number of this? Pretty easy. We just control the number of divisions of this circle. So if I want to have three fins, I have three points, two fins, two points. So pretty straightforward. I actually want this to be controlled by the number of planes that I've got dividing up this rocket. So let's visualize this merge here. So these different planes, see we've got these different panels that we've created. We want the, the fins to actually be attached to the panels, which if that's the case, we might want to have those kind of defined by the number of panels. That was done actually up here in this copy where I copied the, the grid cutters <coughs> in the rocket fuselage in the first video. In this case, I've got three um, cutters. So what I'm going to do is just take this total number. I'm going to copy parameter. We're going to go over to the circle and then its divisions. We're going to do paste relative references. So instead of just copying and pasting the number, it's always going to look at and reference the number uh, of divisions that we've got there. So now if it's three, we've got three panels, we've got three fins. You don't have to set it up like this. I just find that this makes it a little bit simpler. Uh, to work with and that way you're not having to kind of like move fins around to try to, to keep them on the panels and Really for a reasonable number of panels. We have a reasonable number of fins You're probably not going to have crazy numbers of panels like this now, of course you could change that up if you wanted to but uh, This is just a quick and simple way uh, To do that and you could also have like maximum and minimum values and stuff like that or even have like uh, a slider and like add or subtract uh, with a slider if you wanted. So you can get pretty advanced like adding pieces to the interface and stuff, but <clears throat> we're not gonna get quite quite into the, that too much. Now, you'll notice that our fins are kind of like floating kind of like out to the side in this weird way. Um, and if we move our circle up, so I'm just gonna select the circle and hit enter so I can get this little box. And notice as we get further up here, it's not really respecting the size of this uh, this uh, fuselage at all. And it's also kind of placed it on the, the seams rather than placing it on the panels themselves. So structurally, that doesn't seem like it would make a lot of sense. I'm just going to bring this back down to about where it's going to be placed when I'm finished with this, which is probably right about that. Now, let's go ahead and fix the rotation first so that it's not placing it right on these seams. Uh, this is the rotation in the y-axis, and if I kind of middle mouse click and drag, we can see that that's what's rotating here. Uh, if you remember from the video one, when we did this copy to points, we actually used 360 divided by whatever this number happens to be, 3, 4, 5, etc. So we're actually going to use the same thing again. So I can just take this number, or uh, we can take this number directly from our divisions here. I'm just going to hit and C to copy. I'm going to paste that up here. Now if we do 360 divided by uh, that channel, nothing changes. It's just, it's rotated it. We can see that the, the bounding box is now rotated, but it's still just on top of the lines because, well, we're using the exact same equation that we used before, 360 divided by whatever the number is. So let's put it unsurprisingly in exactly the same place. We want it offset by exactly half. So what's half of 360? 180. So we do 180 divided by that channel. We end up with the exact amount of rotation that we need to put it right in the middle there. So pretty, pretty straightforward. A little bit of math there. Not too bad though. All right. So now we've got our circle kind of set up. We've got our fins, but they're still kind of floating out kind of floating off to the side here. So there's a couple of things that we need to do to fix this. First of all, we're gonna use what's called a ray to get the, the points to basically stick to the sides of this rocket fuselage. So I'm gonna add, just after the circle here, we're gonna, oh, I'm sorry, after the polyframe, really, we're gonna add what's called a ray. So I'm gonna hit tab, 
ray. And we're going to feed this polyframe into that first input. And we're going to feed the rocket into the second input. So the first input is what we want to move, and the second input is kind of the collision primitives or what we want it uh, to move based on. And then I'm just going to drag this little line here out. And you can see it has basically snapped it to the side here pretty handily, which is nice. Um, now, if I move this circle up and down, so say I take this circle and I just move it up a little bit, it actually moves it pretty well until we get here. So what happens here at this the top part? Well, unfortunately what's happening is that the circle is just a little bit too small. If we actually look, I'm going to template view this and then look at the circle itself, we can see that those points are actually inside of the rocket fuselage. And so that, that ray isn't working the way that it's, that it's supposed to. So we need to make sure that this is always just a little bit bigger than the rocket fuselage, um, or that it's as large as the, the largest point of the rocket fuselage. We've actually already done something similar to that uh, before up in our, again, in our little cutter here. So we're doing a lot of the similar things here. So with the circle, I'm just going to use the B box again. So B box parentheses, quotes, dot, dot, forward slash. We're going to use the rocket, that null that I put at the very end of the uh, the rocket fuselage. So not this rocket high out that has all the cuts in it, but the, the uh, rocket itself. That rocket right there. And into quotes, comma. I'm going to do <coughs> D, let's give it a space, capital D underscore X size, all caps and then end our parentheses. And if I click that, well, what's happened? It's gotten way too big. You can see it has basically elongated this thing really, really far. When we did this with our circle uh, and our, our grid up here, it was fine to just kind of leave those as is because they, we didn't really care how far like this circle stuck out with, we just, you know, it's kind of fine to leave it way too big like that. In this case, though, we actually want it to be sized a little bit smaller so that the ray is going to work better. So in order for that to work, we want to make sure that this is a little bit smaller. In this case, what we're doing is we're taking the size of the, the box. Let's say the size of the box is 1. And if the size of the circle is 1, then they're pretty much the same. But what we're actually controlling here is the radius. And if you remember from math class, radius is exactly one half of the diameter. So we don't want to be making it quite this big. That's what we're controlling here. And that's why this circle is so big is that we're just, we're basically using the diameter twice. We're doubling the diameter. In this case, we want to divide it by two. And now it'll be nice and small. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. I'm just going to copy this whole thing and then paste it in the Z axis. This time, instead of X size, though, we're going to change that to Z size. And let's jump back down here to our merge. And see what we can see here. So now our fins are actually placed right on the sides there, just exactly where we, we want them to be, which is pretty handy. So now I'm going to take this uh, circle here. I'm just going to move this down working pretty well so far. So we've got it placed pretty much right on the, the side of this, which is pretty, pretty easy. So I'm going to move this down about where we want it to be. There's still one tiny little issue here. That's just that this is sticking out a little bit too far. You just go up to the ray and we can change the lift. So we drag that lift out just a little bit. It'll just kind of put the fins so that they're just slightly inside that, that fuselage geometry. And that should work pretty much everywhere. So that's it for the fins. We've got them placed, we've got them numbered, we've got them controlled by the number of panels. Pretty cool stuff. In the next video, we're going to start looking at getting the windows on the sides here. Setting up just kind of a, like a little metal rim and then a window for each one of these panels up here at the top. So I hope you found that helpful and I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to save.